Hello, folks and goats. My name is Griffin, and welcome to the Command Valley. Thank you to GameGrid for sponsoring this video. If you would like to support the channel and get cards while doing so, then head on over to GameGrid's website. We will have a link in the description box below where you can take a copy and pasteable deck list that we will include right to their website and get those cards shipped directly to your house. Additionally, if you're looking for a direct way to support the channel, then head on over to patreon.com slash command valley and check out our awesome perks and consider joining us today. As days go by, more Commander Legends Commanders are being released, and I cannot be more excited for this set. I am just absolutely stoked. So I have another deck tech for you guys, one of the ones that I think is the most strange, most odd, and most unique that has come out from Commander Legends. And that commander is Obeka Brute Chronologist. For one blue-black red, we have a 3-4 legendary creature, Ogre Wizard. With only one ability, tap, the player whose turn it is may end the turn. Now I can't tell you guys how many times I've put a Sundial of the Infinite into my decks to abuse the end of turn abilities. And now we have it on a commander and oh my goodness, the things that we can do and the ways that we can abuse Obeka are just too exciting not to brew. My personal two favorite things about Obeka, the first being that it is a very political card. It is not only a Sundial of the Infinite for you, but you can also use it as a Sundial of the Infinite for your opponents. So while also abusing your end of turn, you can also give your opponents the choice of exiling all spells in the stack. Say your opponent casts a Cyclonic Rift on another opponent's turn, you can tap Obeka and give that player the choice to end the turn. Any instant speed removal spells, comboing off on another opponent's turn, there's so much leeway and politics in this card that I just I just absolutely love it. The second being is that there, there is actually many ways to build this deck. Throughout the history of Magic the Gathering, we've gotten many cards and many synergies that have to do with ending the turn or, or things that exile at the end of turn, things that go away at the end of turn. And so the way I have chosen to build this deck is simply by just abusing the end of turn generally. Mostly what we have in this deck is creatures that come onto the battlefield and will exile the next end step, reanimate spells that exile things at the next end step, steal spells, all that jazz. Now, I just want to remind everybody that Obeka, when building Obeka, you have to remember that there are two differences with end the turn abilities. Obeka can only abuse cards that say at the beginning of the next end step and not at end of turn. For instance, let's look at two examples so I can illustrate the effect and where you can use it. For the first, we have Sneak Attack. For three and a red, we have an enchantment, and for red, you may put a creature card from your hand onto the battlefield. That creature gains haste and sacrifice the creature at the beginning of the next end step. Then we have a card, Loose Calm, which is three and a red for a sorcery. Gain control of the target creature until end of turn. Untap that creature, gains haste until end of turn, and can't be blocked this turn except by two or more creatures. Now, obviously, one of these cards is much better than the other, but here we are just illustrating where you can use Obeka and where you can't. For Sneak Attack, because on the card it says, at the beginning of the next end step, we can respond to the end step by tapping Obeka and ending the turn ourselves. This puts that trigger on the stack and then exiles it, and then we will never have that trigger again. With Loose Calm, it just says gain control of target creature un until end of turn. Until end of turn is not an ability that goes on the stack. So if you choose to use Loose Calm to gain control of target creature, and you choose to end the turn with Obeka, you still will be ending the turn and the creature will go back to your opponent. It's not exiling any effect on the stack, it will still return to your opponent. Now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk about the deck that we have built. So I have four categories in this deck the first being end of turn abuse. Obviously we have a lot of cards in here that have to do with end of turn, which we can use to our advantage by ending the turn early and helping those things stick around or those effects to stay put. First off to illustrate this is Kroxa, Titan of Death's Hunger. For black and red, we have a 6-6 Elder Giant. When Kroxa enters the battlefield, sacrifice it unless it escaped. Whenever Kroxa enters the battlefield or attacks, each opponent discards a card, then each opponent who did discard a non-land card this way loses three life, and you can escape it for black, black, red, red. So the way that this works is when Kroxa enters the battlefield, you're gonna get both of those triggers on the stack. The first being to sacrifice it unless it escaped, and the second to make your opponents each discard a card and those who didn't discard a non-land card to lose three life. Now the way that it works, the discard trigger will go on the stack first, then the sacrifice trigger will go on the stack. So you can have all of your opponents discard a card, tap Obeka to end the turn, exiling the effect to sacrifice Kroxa from the stack and keep it around. Avaricious Dragon is two red red for a 4-4 dragon with flying. At the beginning of your end step, draw an additional card. And at the beginning of your end step, discard your hand. Again, these are two different effects, so you can respond to the beginning of your end step discarding your hand, exiling that on the stack after you've drawn an additional card. 
Identity Thief is 2 blue blue for a 0 3 shapeshifter. Whenever Identity Thief attacks, you may exile another target non token creature. If you do, Identity Theft becomes a copy of that creature until end of turn. Return the exiled card to the battlefield under its owner's control at the beginning of the next end step. With Identity Thief, we can go in, exile one of our opponent's Eldrazi's. Identity Thief becomes itself an Eldrazi, and at the trigger of the end step, we can tap Obeka and remove that ability, making sure that that creature does not come back to the battlefield. Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker is 2 red 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 for a 2 2 legendary creature Goblin Shaman with haste. You can tap him to put a creature token into play that's a copy of target non legendary creature you control. That creature token has haste and sacrifice at the beginning of the next end step. So again, we can tap Kiki Jiki to make a token of our non legendary creatures, and when the ability goes on the stack, for the end of turn exile, we can tap Obeka and end the turn, removing that from the stack. Final Fortune is red red for an instant. Take an extra turn after this one. At the beginning of that turn's end step, you lose the game. Now there's a couple other cards that also have the same kind of ability. We have Last Chance, which is red red for a sorcery that says the same thing. So we can take an extra turn and then at the beginning of that end step, when the trigger goes on for us to lose the game, we can tap Obeka and exile that ability. Now a lot of people have been talking about the fact that you can get an Isochron Scepter and one of these spells and take infinite turns. Now I chose not to put this in this list simply because I prefer decks that, you know, win a little bit more fairly. But if you like those combo centric decks, then an amazing include. Ideas Unbound is blue blue for a sorcery. Draw three cards and then discard three cards at the beginning of the next end step. Twin Flame is one in a red for sorcery with strive. This spell costs two in red more for each target beyond the first. Choose any number of target creatures you control. For each of them, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Those tokens have haste. Exile them at the beginning of the next end step. Void Walk is three and a blue for a sorcery. Exile target creature. Return it to the battlefield under its own control at the beginning of the next end step. And also has Cypher. Really fun way of reusing an exile spell. And then when the trigger goes on the stack, to return our opponent's creatures back to the battlefield, we exile it and they will never come back again. Slave of Bolas is 3, Grixis Hybrid and Black for a Sorcery, gain control of target creature, untap that creature, it gains haste until end of turn, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step, allowing us to steal our opponent's creatures and keep them around with our Obeka ability. Treacherous Urge is 4 and a black for an instant, target opponent reveals their hand. You may put a creature card from, from among it onto the battlefield under your control, that creature gains haste, sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Very nice because it's got instant speed so we can catch something for our opponent's hand, especially if they've tutored something right into their hand, whether it be a Crater Hearth Behemoth or an Avacyn. This has a lot of flexibility, and we can keep it on our battlefield. Desolation is one black black for an enchantment at the beginning of each end step. Each player who tapped a land for mana this turn sacrifices a land. Desolation deals two damage to each player who sacrificed a planes this way. Now this is a very mean hate card, but very fun because we can avoid that trigger from Desolation and our opponents will have to deal with it. However, we can still use it as a political tool. If our opponents want to make deals with us, we can use Obeka to give them an out from Desolation. Flame Shadow Conjuring is three and a red for an enchantment. Whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay red. If you do, put a token onto the battlefield that's a copy of that creature. That token gains haste and exile at the beginning of the next end step. Psychic Vortex is two blue blue for an enchantment and cumulative upkeep draw a card at the beginning of your end step, sacrifice the land, and discard your hand. Now this can be a pretty dangerous card because if our opponents remove a backup before the Psychic Vortex trigger goes on the stack, we will have to sacrifice a land and discard our hand. However, if we can keep this around, we can draw a ton of cards. Splinter Tin is two red red for an enchantment. Enchant creature. Enchanted creature has tap. Put a token that's a copy of this creature onto the battlefield. That token has haste and exile it at the beginning of the next end step. Now let's talk about our reanimate spells and the creatures that we will want to reanimate with those spells. So first off, let's go through the most powerful things that we can reanimate. Combustible Gear Hulk is four red red for an artifact creature construct with first strike. When it enters the battlefield, target opponent may have you draw three cards. If that player doesn't, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Then Combustible Gear Hulk deals damage to that player equal to the total converted mana cost of those cards. Massacre Worm is 3, black, black, black for a 6-5 Worm. When it enters the battlefield, creatures your opponent's control get minus 2, minus 2 until end of turn. Whenever a creature an opponent controls is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, that player loses 2 life. Now this can be very nice, especially with our opponents that are playing go-wide token strategies. We can play this Massacre Worm and maybe just end the game for them. Cedrus the Traitor King is 3 in Grixis for a 5-5 Legendary Creature Zombie Warrior. Each creature card in your graveyard has Unearth for 2 and a black. Very nice to abuse with our Obeka. Unearth is also an end step trigger, which means we can use Unearth to bring creatures back from our graveyard onto the battlefield and we can end the turn before they get exiled. 
Deluvian Primordial is 5 blue blue for 5-5 five, five flying avatar. When it enters the battlefield for each opponent, you may cast up to one target instant or sorcery card from that player's graveyard without paying its mana cost. If a card cast this way would be put into a graveyard this turn, exile it instead. Molten Primordial is 5 red red for a 6-4 creature avatar with haste. When it enters the battlefield for each opponent, gain control of up to one target creature that player controls until end of turn. Untap those creatures, they gain haste until end of turn. We also have Sepulchre Primordial for 5 black black. We have a 5-4 avatar with Intimidate. When it enters the battlefield for each opponent, you may put up to one target creature card from that player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Because we love it when people hate us, Shieldard Whispering 1 is 5 black black for a 6-6 six, six legendary creature paraded with, with Swamp Walk, and at the beginning of your upkeep, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and at the beginning of each opponent's upkeep, that player sacrifices a creature. And then, of course, what kind of reanimate strategy would it be if we didn't include a couple of Eldrazi? We have Path Razor of Ulamog, which is 11 generic for an Eldrazi with Annihilator 3, and it can't be blocked except by 3 or more creatures. Then we have It That Betrays. For 12 generic, we have an Eldrazi with Annihilator 2. When this creature attacks, defending player sacrifices two permanents, and whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent, put that card onto the battlefield under your control. So let's talk about the ways that we're going to be able to reanimate these creatures. First off, we have Apprentice Necromancer. For one and a black, we have a 1-1 with black, sacrifice it, return to our creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, that creature gains haste, and at the beginning of the next end step, sacrifice it. Felden of the Third Path is one red red for a 2-3 legendary creature, Artificer Human. For a two and a red, we can tap him, create a token that's a copy of target creature card in your graveyard, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. It gains haste and sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. So I just wanted to note that normally these reanimate spells cost about five mana, from what I've gathered from wizards and from the total amount of reanimate spells that I've seen. However, when we sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step, it allows us to get spells that are much cheaper, but we can still keep those around with Obeka. Puppeteer Click is three black black for a flying fairy wizard. When it enters the battlefield, put target creature card from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It gains haste and at the beginning of your next end step, exile it. And it also has persist. Shallow Grave is one and a black for an instant. Return the top creature card of your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature gains haste until the end of turn. Exile at the beginning of the next end step. It is also an instant, which means we can respond to it as soon as our creature dies or hits the graveyard, which is just so beautifully nice. Corpse Dance is two and a black for an instant with buyback for two generic. Return the top creature card of your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature gains haste until the end of turn. Exile it at the beginning of the next end step. Footsteps of the Gorio is two and a black for a sorcery. Return target creature card from a graveyard to the battlefield and sacrifice it at the beginning of the next end step. Gruesome Encore does the same thing for two and a black, however, it takes it from our opponent's graveyard. Whip of Erebos is two black black for a legendary artifact enchantment. Creatures you control have lifelink, and for two black black, we can tap it and return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It gains haste and also has the same exile trigger. And then lastly, we have Dawn of the Dead for two black black black. At the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life. At the beginning of your upkeep, you may return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That creature gains haste until the end of turn and exile at the beginning of the next end step. Now, of course, since we're playing a lot of mill and reanimate spells, of course, we have to include Living Death, which is three black black for a sorcery. Each player exiles all creature cards from their graveyards, then sacrifices all creatures they control, then puts all cards they exiled this way onto the battlefield. Now that we've gone through the ways that we're going to be reanimating these creatures, let's talk about the ways that we're going to get those creature cards into our graveyard to reanimate them. Any discard to draw spells, such as Faithless Looting, which is one red for draw two cards and discard two cards, and we can flash it back for two and a red. Cathartic Reunion, where we can discard two cards to draw three cards. Two, tormenting Voice for one and a red, we discard a card and draw two cards. This means that we can cycle through our deck to find our reanimate spells while putting the big creature cards into our graveyard. For mill spells, we have Glyphs the Unthinkable, which is blue-black for a sorcery. Target player puts the top 10 cards of their library into their graveyard. Chase's Erasure, which is an enchantment for one and a blue. Whenever you draw a card, you may have target player put the top card of their library into their graveyard, meaning we're going to choose ourselves. Mesmeric Orb is an artifact for two generic. Whenever a permanent becomes untapped, that permanent's controller puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. An extremely good card that makes sure that we can dump as many things into our graveyard very quickly. Traumatizes three, blue, blue for sorcery. Target player puts the top half of their library rounded down into their graveyard. And then we also have Windfall, which is a sorcery for two and a blue. Each player discards their hand, then draw cards equal to the greatest number of cards a player discarded this way. Finishing off our deck, we're going to talk about the synergistic cards that we've included in this deck. Some of the best synergistic cards we have are ways of being able to untap Obeka. So Vizier of the Tumbling Sands and Fate Stitcher 
are two creatures that allow us to be able to untap and tap permanents, meaning we can tap Obeka to end the turn, we can, and we can also untap them with Fate Stature or Vizier of the Tumbling Sands to make sure we can respond to our opponent's turns as well. Title Barracuda is 3 and a blue for a 3-4 fish. Any player may cast spells as though they had flash, and your opponents can cast spells during your turn. This incentivizes your opponents to cast things at instant speed, but it also allows us to give the option of exiling those spells on the stack for our other opponents. Mirror Mad Phantasm is 3 blue blue for a 5-1 spirit with flying, and for 1 and a blue, you can put Mirror Mad Phantasm into your library, and if you do, you reveal cards from the top of your library until a card named Mirror Mad Phantasm is revealed, then you put it onto the battlefield and all other cards revealed this way into your graveyard. Probably the best mill spell that we have in this deck because we can essentially mill pretty much our whole library unless we're unlucky. Glorious End is 2 in red for an instant, end the turn, and at the beginning of your next M step, you lose the game. So we can respond to that trigger, allowing us to use Glorious End to exile any spells in the stack at any time on our opponent's turn. Of course, we have Sundial of the Infinite, which is too generic for an artifact, and for one in tap, you can end the turn, but you can only do this on your turn. However, it is just another Obeka ability, which we will definitely want to use in this deck. All right, lastly, before I finish this deck tech, I just want to mention that Commander Legends is coming close, and there are a lot of really good cards coming out that are that could go very well in this deck. So, when you go pick up Commander Legends, watch out for these four cards. Arumai of the Dead Tide is one blue-black for a 1-4 legendary creature Merfolk Wizard. Tap, exile cards from your graveyard equal to the number of opponents you have, and target creature card in your graveyard gains Encore until end of turn. The Encore cost is equal to its mana cost. So Encore means you exile the creature card from your graveyard and you create a token copy for each opponent and it attacks that opponent this turn if able. However, you have to sacrifice them at the beginning of the next end step, but it goes super well with Obeka, which means we can get three copies of our creatures, and if they stick around from after combat, then we can end the turn before they get exiled. Rux, Ruxsha, Ruxsha Debaser is for black black for a 6-6 cat demon. When it attacks, put target creature card from defending player's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control, and encores for 6 black black. Opposition Agent is 2 and a black for a 3-2 Human Rogue with Flash. You control your opponents while they search their libraries, and while an opponent is searching their library, they exile each card they find. You may play those cards for as long as they remain exiled, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any color to cast them. And then for the last card that I suggest that you watch out for, Hull Breacher. For 2 and a blue, we have a 3-2 Merfolk Pirate with Flash. If an opponent would draw a card except for the first one they draw on each of their draw steps, instead you create a treasure token. And that is it for our deck tech today. If you want to look at the full deck list, then go ahead and check out the description box below. We will have a link and a copy and pasteable deck list that you are more than welcome to take onto GameGrib's website and get those cards shipped directly to your house. If you have any other suggestions or ways that you have built this deck different from this one, then please let us know in the comment section below. I'm very excited for this deck and I'm very excited for Commander Legends and I hope you guys are too. A quick reminder that if you would like to follow us on our social media, we will include our Facebook and Twitter in the description box as well. And lastly, if you are looking for a good time on Tuesday nights, we stream Brawl every Tuesday at 7pm Mountain Standard Time. So feel free to come on over, hang out with us, talk about Commander Legends and have a good time. Alright fellow goats, that is it for me today. We will see you tomorrow for our next deck tech. Peace out. See you later. See you next time.